in this video today we're going to start out by mixing some paint. We have a lot of thrift flips, dump finds, upcycling, and repurposing to do today. So we're going to get this paint mixed up. So I'm making a burgundy paint. I usually take whatever red that I have, which today I have the Apple Barrel red paint and a little bit of the Waverly ink or black paint. And what I do is pour all the red that I have, take a little bit of the black, very tiny bit, it doesn't take a lot, and I add a little bit of water to my red and so that I can get any of the red out of the bottle that I possibly can. And I add a little bit of water to that paint. Mix it up really, really well. I like my burgundy dark. It's got a black hue to it, like a black undertone with the reddish tone as well. So just so you, when you see it here, it's it looks burgundy. When it dries, it dries darker. So we're going to start with this candle holder. It has a little drawer underneath, and it's a really nice, sturdy little box. And I really like this a lot, but I don't like the paint job. So this I, was a dump find that I got, and I decided that I was going to paint this burgundy today. I haven't done this color in a while. I'd been kind of low on my paint for the burgundy, so that's kind of why I mixed it up, and we're using it today. So as I was doing it and I got my first coat on and it dried, there was an oil down in the corner that came through, as you probably saw there. Um, and so it took me a bit to get that off. I had to clean it and use some different cleaners on it and then wipe it down. I sanded it and wiped it. It took me quite a while to get that done, but I did get it out. And I think it was essential oil because when I heated it up, because I thought, well, if I melted it, because I thought it was wax, I thought if I melted it, it would work to get it out of there and I could just wipe it out. But I think it was essential oil because it got very strong smelling. So um, not bad at all, but thank goodness. But uh, it's really not what I was looking for. I wanted to get that oil out of there and make it look a lot better. So I did finally get it out. This took three coats to get this just the way I wanted it. So I did the three coats on it. I even did the drawer inside and I painted the very inside of the drawer a uh, black color. I don't think I got any video of that. I'm now taking a little bit of black on a brush and I'm going along the edges to distress it, to make it look aged and old. So instead of distressing it back to that nasty paint that it was before, I decided to just use some black and distress it that way. So that's another way that you can do it. Once it was all dry, I used my Rust-Oleum Clear Spray to seal it and this is finished. So I haven't tried this before using tissue paper in my printer to print off a printable that I received from Tracy V Designs. I absolutely love the design, but this didn't work out so well for me to do this with my tissue paper. I think what I did was when I attached the paper to my printer paper, which is what I use printer paper, it wasn't sturdy enough. So I probably should have used cardstock and cut that down as well. So I just took the tissue paper, measured it out, and cut it out, and then taped it to my uh, printer paper and stuck it in my printer. My printer got stuck, it wasn't happy, and it didn't print the first two designs, so I only got two out of the four designs out of this printable. So I just printed it on regular printer paper, and it worked out just fine. 
Now I have these baby food jars that my sister gave me. I have a ton of them. She had a dog that could only eat soft foods and she was very picky. And so the only thing she would eat is baby food. So my sister would buy tons and tons of baby food for her. She has since passed, but I have got a ton of baby food jars. So I have this printable. I It comes typically like this when you print it out. It's a nice big tag size. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. But I needed something smaller for my my baby food jars because I wanted to stick, stick these on the front. So I sized it down till I could get it so that it would fit my baby food jars on the very front. So so I'm showing you here. I just, just uh, sized it down. I still have it so I could make the bigger copies if I want, but I am not going to use those today. Um, well, I am going to use one today, but later on in this video. So I'm going to break out the moss paint, this beautiful green paint from Waverly. You can buy this right at Walmart. And it's a beautiful green paint. And I wanted to paint these jars all green. It took two coats. Once my jars were all dry, I cut down my tags so that they would fit on the front and I am going to use my Mod Podge and Mod Podge them onto the front of my jars. Now in this project, I have two jars of Mod Podge. I have a plain jar that I use for things like this when I just want to Mod Podge something down. And then I have another jug that I use that is for grubbying and that gets typically it gets spices in it like cinnamon and coffee and things like that so i usually use two now in this project i used both of them uh, because i wanted a nice clean look on the front of my label but the rest of the jar i wanted it to have the spice mix on it or the grubby mix so i uh, used the other jar when I did the grubbying. So when you do this, you wanna make sure that your label is dry before you put any grubby mix on your jars. You don't want the grubby mix to stick to your labels because it will cover them up and you don't want that. So what I do is hit it with the heat gun or hair dryer and just on the label part to get it to dry a little bit quicker. And then I add a little bit of Mod Podge around the, the rest of the jar so that I can get the, mod, the grubby mix on there. Now, originally I was just gonna put a light coat of the grubby mix on so that you could see more of the green, but I decided that I wanted to make it a little bit thicker. I liked the thicker look on the jars, so I added more Mod Podge, which is the grubby mix Mod Podge and I put that on to my jars so that I could add some more grubby mix and get that to stick. And as you can see, I'm just, I just keep going along and cleaning off my label so that you can still see the front of it. I took my jar lids and I painted those green as well, and we'll do a little bit more to those later once they're dry. Now here's one that I did a while ago and I, sealed it. I sealed that grubby mix in with more Mod Podge on the top and I let it dry a little bit so you could see what it looks like and with the two together. So you see the one on my right hand, I added the grubby mix to seal it in and the one on the left hand is loose or it's stuck on just with the Mod Podge underneath. So now what we're going to do is seal it with my Mod Podge and what I do is just get a big glob of it and I tap it on there. Just tap it on because if you brush too hard it will brush that grubby mix off so you just want to be gentle and tap it and then once you get enough on there you can brush it down because you don't want it too gloopy and thick because it will take forever to dry so you just kind of tap it on there like i'm doing here and then just wipe it back once you get a little bit on there i do also let these sit for a little while i think i let them sit for like 30 minutes 
and that allows the Mod Podge underneath to dry and really hold on to that grubby mix. And sometimes you can do it for overnight if you wanted to, and it will really hold. So you don't have to worry about the, the mix coming off. Now that the jars and the lids are dry, we're going to put the lids on and do a little bit of distressing. We're going to add a little antique wax to the tops of the jars to just give them a little older aged look and just put that on and we're just going to wipe it back. Now for the last few finishing touches, we're going to add some twine around underneath the lid and just wrap that around three or four times and put a nice cute little bow under that. And then I'm going to go back with some black paint just a little bit on a brush and highlight those edges and make it look even more distressed with the black paint. These are great for shelf sitters, but they also work great if you add candles to the inside with a wick. You can have a little cute little grubby candle jar. I hope that you are enjoying the projects that I'm working on. I just wanted to jump in here and talk about my my grubby mix that I have um, and the Etsy shop that I have. I have an Etsy shop and I sell these uh, candles that I grubby up. I use my own personal mixture that I've come up with that I really love on how to make the grubby mix and to put it on the candles. So I have the, this is the three by three candle awesome beautiful little candle and then I have some tea lights that are grubbied and I have some votives that are grubbied as you can see so I do these uh, and those are on my Etsy shop and I'll have that linked down below in the description I'll also link it to the pinned comment at the top of this video but I just wanted to jump in and let you know that I do that I also have a ton of videos on how I do it, what I use, how I mix my mixture, and I'll put those all linked down in the description and the pinned comment down below as well. So it's easy to find. So if you want to make your own mixture and do it yourself, you absolutely can. I have videos where I've done it on glass, just like I did today. This is one of my Crow, uh, printables that I have uh, that you can purchase as well and I've made candles out of these but I don't know if this one's totally full yet I don't think I have any more of the jars that are grubbied on my Etsy shop which I need to get on there but um, I do have the printables that are on there as and the printable that I use today is Tracy I'll have her link down in the description too so that you can go to her Etsy shop if you like this cow, uh, goat, I think it is, or sheep printable, you'll be able to pick that up. And any other one, she's got tons like printables on her page on Etsy, on her shop. So I just wanted to jump in and let you know that. Um, and I hope you're enjoying my projects. And let's jump in and get the rest of them done. Here's where I use the bigger printable that I got from Tracy's Etsy shop. And I'm going to put it on this, this faux wood book that I have. 
I don't know where I got this, but I found it and I said, I just want to stick this on there, I think. So these little printables are supposed to be like spools of thread, I guess, and they're just so cute. So I decided to put that on the front of the little book. So I'm going to use my Mod Podge and stick that down and then seal the top of it with the Mod Podge. I purchased a new mold from Iron Orchid Designs. It's called Conservatory Labels and I just was excited to get this and use it. So I'm going to use it on this book. So I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to use here. Uh, I'm going to use this bigger one where the middle is a little bit bigger so that I can use a stamp on it. So I use some cornstarch in my mold and that pops out just so easily with my clay. And I'm just going to soften up those edges a little bit. And then I have these stamps from the scrapbooking shop that I will link down in the description. And these, I'm going to use the stamp to stamp in the clay before I let it dry. So I'm just going to push it gently down into the clay to get an impression and then lift it up and you'll see what it looks like. I added some regular glue to the back so that I could stick that down at the bottom of my book under my picture. And then I didn't, I don't show it, but I did add a little bit of antique wax on it to see if I liked that look. I wasn't real impressed with it, so I am going to change it later on, but it does give it kind of an aged look to the book. This is kind of what happens when you don't have a clear idea of what you want to do with something, I guess. You just kind of play around with what you have and see what looks the best. So I did take out my rub and buff in the antique gold and my stamps from the scrapbooking shop. And I'm going to add that to my stamps and then add those to like as in a border around the picture. I thought that kind of looked neat and I like the gold with the picture. I thought it made it look a little more antique. So we're gonna just put the rub and buff on there with a brush and I'm gonna add that to the spine of the of the little wooden book. And then I'm gonna move around to the front and I'm gonna finish off the border around the little, the little cow picture that is on the front. I added a little bit of black and some rub and buff gold to my little label as well, my little clay label. And I think that makes that pop and also blend with the rest of what's happening uh, on the front of it. So this is a great little shelf sitter, I think, and it will be unique and something that will draw your eye. These next two projects are very quick, so I'm going to show them to you together. So the first one here is a set of chickens that are candle holders that I got at the free shack at my local dump. And I'm going to paint those with two coats of this burgundy paint. Then I take a dry brush of black, just a light black color, and go over the top of that to highlight some of the details in the chickens. They get a seal coat with Rust-Oleum Clear Spray. This next project is going to be a couple of candle holders. They're metal and they're very dingy so I had to give them a good clean. But I have these little round pieces of wood that I get from the 24-hour store that I will link down in the description. You, I have an affiliate link and you can also use the discount code that I have with that. And I'm just going to glue them with some 
E6000 and some hot glue to the top to make the tops flat instead of concaved. And I had to bend those little tabs at the top of the candle holders down, but it worked really well and I like this look better. I gave them a coat of black paint, waited for them to dry, and then distressed them down around the edges. I added some antique wax to the top to richen up the color and to seal it in. Now I think these little chickens have a nice place to sit. enjoyed my projects today let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it was don't forget to like share and subscribe and check out the description box and the pinned comment below for any links to items that I use today and any videos that you'd like to catch up on if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more click this next one on the screen